First, the Insight team, whom I'm afraid we can't reveal who they are. There is no photo. They're called Jonathan Calvert and Claire Newell from the Sunday Times. Um, the Insight team exposed a number of financial and legis legislative... I really shouldn't have had that second one. Um, abuses in the Lords, which previously escaped scrutiny in a body which retains its antiquated gentleman's club ethos. The stories have already serious ramifications and point to an urgent need for a reformed second chamber. Their revelations in January 2009 that peers were prepared to help lobbyists amend legislation in return for cash resulted in two peers being suspended for the first time since the 17th century. This is when the two of them took up their seats. Um, <laughs> The report also highlighted the widespread practice of peers clocking into the chamber for a minute just so they can get, collect allowances. They also produced a series of articles which alleged that individual peers were defrauding the taxpayer by claiming allowances they should not have been entitled to, also which have led to fraud investigations. Jonathan Calvert and Claire Newell. <laughs> Ian Cobain, who looks like that. Um, he was writing in The Guardian and on Guardian Unlimited has uncovered a long-running investigation into Britain's involvement in the torture of terror suspects detained overseas. Cobain reported on the allegations of British complicity being made by a handful of detainees or their lawyers and was able to locate and highlight the evidence that supported these allegations. He reported on the existence of a secret government-sanctioned interrogation policy that underpinned what MI5 has been doing a policy that led to suspects being tortured. Last March, Gordon Brown told the Commons the policy was to be rewritten and made public. And in June 2009, he disclosed that Tony Blair had been aware of this policy. Well, there's a shock. <laughs> ben Leakman from the Sunday and Daily Telegraph. Ben Leakman's investigations into MPs' expenses began in 2004 and culminated in a series of articles published in the Sunday Telegraph and Daily Telegraph in May 2009. The story exposed MPs' exploitation of parliamentary allowances to subsidise their lifestyles and multiple homes and forced the disclosure of expenses details for every MP. Uh, Leakman's original request was made in January 2005 when the Freedom of Information Act came into force. After repeated refusals and appeals, his case and that of two other journalists, Jonathan Ungood Thomas and Heather Brooke, who was shortlisted for this in this prize before, was finally carried to the High Court in May 2008, which ruled in favour of a full disclosure. Ben Leakman. <laughs> Paul Lewis from The Guardian. Paul Lewis's investigation into the death of Ian Tomlinson at the G20 protests in the spring established that a police officer had struck Tomlinson with a baton and pushed him to the ground moments before he died near the Bank of England on 1st of April. A key component of the story was a video filmed by a New York hedge fund manager on his digital camera. Yes, let's hear it for those hedges. Uh, incredible guys. Thank goodness he had the time off. Um, <laughs> Anyway, this was published online on Tuesday the 7th of April and in print the following day, showing the incident in full. Lewis' investigation relied in equal measure, however, on a reconstruction of Tomlinson's last 30 minutes alive, drawn from oral, photographic and video evidence, which he had tracked down. The testimony of these others was included in a dossier contradicting the police's version of events, which the Guardian submitted to the IPCC. The Commission launched a criminal investigation. A post-mortem revealed Mr. Tomlinson had not died of a heart attack as originally thought by the police. He died of internal bleeding. The TSG officer was questioned on suspicion of manslaughter and the CPS is considering whether to bring charges. Paul Lewis. <laughs> Rob Waugh of the Yorkshire Post. Um, for those who think it only happens in the metropolis. Uh, investigative journalism is alive and well outside. Uh, War's exposure of cavalier spending at Leeds Metropolitan University involved examination of thousands of staff credit card statements and a wider investigation into the management culture surrounding the university. He also exposed and discredited the takeover of Sheffield Wednesday Football Club, uncovering links with a money launderer convicted through an FBI sting 
a history of debts and a series of highly questionable links with businesses in Europe. War's other long-running investigation into Leeds City Credit Union, the country's biggest, revealed wholesale mismanagement, complete with the chief executive attempting to run the institution as her own personal business. The stories triggered the unravelling of the credit union's mismanagement, prompted the sacking of the chief executive, Sue Davenport, and revealed huge underreporting of bad debts, requiring an emergency £4 million bailout from public funds. This is not just the banks. West Yorkshire Police Fraud Squad are now conducting an inquiry. For those three investigations, Mr Rob War of the Yorkshire Post. Stephen Wright and Richard Pendlebury from the Daily Mail, which would have been a good laugh to tell Paul. Um, Shirok Miraskandari was one of the most high-profile, outspoken and expensive lawyers in London, whose clients included foreign royalty and some of the richest men in the world. But he came to wider attention representing Assistant Commissioner Tariq Ghafour in that officer's litigation against the Metropolitan Police. He promised publicly to bring down the upper echelon of the force, then led by Sir Ian Blair. Investigation using dozens of sources into Miraskandari's background on both sides of the Atlantic revealed his past and the bogus nature of his qualifications and his claims of experience. It all showed his close and mutually beneficial cultivation of Met Police Commander Ali Desai and Keith Vaz, MP, Chairman of the Commons Home Affairs Select Committee. Since the articles appeared, Miraskandari and his senior partner have been suspended by the Law Society and the offices of the West End firm Dean and Dean have been raided by the Solicitor's Regulation Authority and closed. The Solicitor faces a disciplinary tribunal later this year. Um, I should tell you that it's been a very exciting day today because um, I received two lawyers' letters um, <laughs> on the grounds um, of even putting a citation up um, for this story. We have a nice one here from J. Tirani Solicitors and another one here from MGP Law, private and confidential, not for publication, <laughs> or onward transmission. So luckily we haven't done any of that. Um, they're very upset about uh, this citation being read. And this one says that um, we're talking sums of £50 million. <laughs> So, there we go. Uh, obviously, we replied to them, politely. Prestram versus Arkell, 1971. Adam will fill you in. Um, so, uh, those are the shortlist, um, a very fine shortlist, and um, it only remains for me to get the winner, and then we'll all come up and get your cheques. So, 